Everybody wants to be an astronaut. Take the long, tall trip to the sun. Howdy everyone, hello and welcome back to more for the Golden Path International. It's being sponsored by Unfassible Narrative. I am your host and commentator of The Black Shadow and we'll be taking a look at Group I action today. Uh, this is the second game of the group that I've actually covered. Uh, the first one was not that long ago uh, and we're featuring a couple of the same players, and particularly Oko and the winner of the first game, uh, Zazibu, who was pretty impressive in his game uh, and will be playing again here. But a couple of new protagonists in this one, uh, specifically Unfussable themselves our uh, main sponsor for the tournament, as well as James the Fart King. And yes, you all owe me money for saying that. I have a coffee. Let's go have a check at the game. All right, and players are getting gathered and ready for this one. So it's beginning. We'll go have a check out and see this one. So yes, Unfossible, uh, Zazibu, uh, James, and Oko here. J Unfossible is going to be first player, which means Zazibu will be first to select. Let's have a look at the row. Um, it's it's a bit expensive, to be fair. Some very good cards here, of course. Reverend Mohammed Mahayim uh, is a very fearsome card if you can find some Bene Gesserit to go with it. There's none currently yet, though, so that's a little bit awkward. But even just revealing two, two revealed two spice is pretty significant. Uh, Agent Engineer uh, for our techs. Some che techs are fairly cheap. That might be of interest. Uh, Guild Chief Admin um, is also pretty solid. A little bit cumbersome to use, but people love the reveal. Uh, Spice Trader is very, very strong. You can get that online early. And then Fedekin Dev Commando is always solid. Plenty of Fremen's to cards around. And the trashing is always useful. As far as techs, uh, Memo Cords, which can be very popular, might see a Beast Pick early. Uh, Restricted Ordnance is also of great interest, probably to a lot of players. And Wind Traps as well, which is also not... Outrageous of any stretch of imagination, especially when it comes early. So there's plenty of combat potential here, that's for sure. Um, and that will probably influence some picks here. I just need the black seat so I can actually see anything going on so that I can provide you with um, with game information. I thought we'll just sort that out for us right now. There we go. So Zazimu's gone and picked Alito in fourth position, which I don't... I don't entirely hate. Um, I think there's definitely... I think mean, Thorpe's fine. Who else have we got here? I see. So no Baron. Ilbarn's still in the game, which is curious. I'm a little bit surprised to go with Leo. Maybe didn't fancy it. Beast is here. Beast looks very good here. Shippers look pretty decent as well. So I suppect we'll see probably Beast. I suspect Yuna. Uh, we'll tell them that they can go start picking leaders. So they were very kind of wait for it. But I suspect we'll see Beast picked immediately. Um, I would think probably Yuna in second... And then probably Hundro first, I think, is the way this is going to go here. Um, James will go for Beast. Oko with Yuna. Um, and I expect we'll probably play Hundro. They haven't played a ton of Hundro, though. I am aware of that. So maybe we might go Ilbarn, um, which would be kind of brutal, though, because Zazu's got um, Lido in fourth. So that's a that would be a little unfortunate. Goes off the beaten track. Yeah, okay, so a Lasery Kaz is the pull here. So you don't see this too often. So a Lasery Kaz is a little different. If you've not seen her played much before, uh, she has this one step ahead ability. So what you've got to do before anyone takes any actions whatsoever, uh, they have to put a card down for their second action like this. Uh, it's not in their hand. Uh, they go around the first round here. And then on the second round, um, if they, they have to reveal the card to the table, which in this case is Seek Allies. And then if they play it for something at that point, uh, they either get a Spice or a Solari, depending on, on how many Agent Icons there are, which is pretty good. Little clumsy. Her guild contact ability as well is just debatable how useful it is. I think you've got to choose when you want it. But that obviously pairs really nicely with one step ahead. Just give you tons of choices. Anyways, with that all done and done, let's have a look at uh, the game situation here. So Laser started off with smuggling. Um, getting that in here. Yuna has gone fold space. She kind of has to here. The problem is Yuna's got both of her diplomacy style cards in hand immediately. Um, which means that she's going to struggle to actually make any... Um, actually get her way to... Um, uh, fold space anytime soon. Beast is going to go steel suit here. It's the uh, mixed smuggling skirmish here. Pretty good rewards for everyone. And then Lido in fourth spot. So Lido has his signet ring and his diplomacy. So curious if the plan is for Lido. You know, I don't even hate seeing wealth from Lito. Um, and I think, you know, you can start using that for Mentat. It's a little bit tricky though. You don't have any daggers though. So it's all, it's a bit cumbersome this. Um... You could go Hardy Warriors and just whack in, like, free troops. 
Knowing that you're very likely to put more troops in afterwards if you need to. Uh, it's the signal rings kind of hampering this, really. Making this very awkward. If that signal ring was a dagger, I would love to see, say, just diplomacy, mentat, and then kind of work it out from there. But uh, that is not the situation here. So this is a little little cumbersome here for um, Zazabu to come and negotiate. He's also got Beast on his right, which is a little awkward. He's going to be doing a lot of fighting here. No great um, tra uh, track climbers either. So his use of the signal is going to be a little bit inconsistent. It's not like you've got a Baron and you know probably where he's going and you can kind of plan around that. And this sort of game, it's, it's not as clear where this is going here. Uh, but Lino surely is going to want to hit Basin um, to go signet ring. But he, I think he wants the Hardy Warriors. And he's concerned if he goes Hardy Warriors, he, he was not likely to get to Basin as well. Someone could well block that to stop his ring ability. So he's got to kind of make a choice what he wants to do here. I think just you could go Basin first. I don't even hate that. It kind of isn't particularly fun, but sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. Um, and I, I think that's what we'll see first is Basin up first. Hold the water and kind of reevaluate. And if you just do that and then go wealth afterwards, you're going to have both daggers in hand next round. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit awkward here. I do understand, but... I think it's, it's it's one of the two choices, or I guess three. Is going to go for the wealth play, so he's setting up for probably Menta, or is he really going to abandon? He's, he's not going to not use his ring here. He's still going to use it for Basin. So he's just kind of giving up on this round. Uh, Eliza will use Seek Hours to go Hardy Warriors. Um, So she gets... Uh, there was there was more than one symbol on that, so she gets the uh, extra Solari uh, for her troubles. Which is, you know, not bad. Uh, Yuna is going to go to Arakeen uh, to get troops near. Not using Seek Allies. Doesn't fancy secrets, so he's going to put in those. Finds Convincing Argument on the redraw. It's actually pretty useful here. I won't lie. That's uh, not a bad find, given the fact the row is kind of pricey. So you need to make sure you've got a reasonable amount of uh, persuasion in your hand to actually buy any, any cards here at the moment. So a little bit tricky. Back to Beast here. Beast does have Signet Ring. And he is, if he wants to, he can win this combat. Uh, he can go to Carfag and do so, and I think we'll probably see it. No, he's just going to take memo quarters. Wow. So he doesn't realize how fortunate this is, because um, he's going to see that Yuna can't actually get to fold space next round. He doesn't know this at all, but she can't get there. So this has actually worked out really well for James. He's a little lucky to, um, to, to do this now. But then I guess you never quite know with, with Yuna, to be fair. But although, to be fair, she might find her way there. It's possible she will be on redraw. Um, she went to Arakeen here. So she's going to have three cards out of about 12 that get her there to um, to false base. So there's a chance she finds it again. Or she's going to have three out of one, two, three, seven, maybe eight cards. So occasionally she will find full space again. If not, Beast is going to be very happy with how this is going to work out here. Lido, of course, goes to Imperial Basin. He will just chase spacing. Laser is going to reveal for four. I suspect we'll be taking either this or Guild Chief Admin. I think both of these are good. Spice Drive is a really strong card. You know, to be able to discard two spice is significant. Power play turns up here. No one can afford that at the moment. Oh, no, I lied. Beast can actually get hold of power play. Ooh. I think he had intention to pick up Exion Engineer, but he might pivot. I was mentioned also, by the way, there. I'm free to buy for Yuna. And now James seen them thinking, ooh, I might be in here for Fold Space next round. It's very possible. Just leave it there. It'll be fine. So Duncan Idaho also turns up the road. Very strong card. This revealing for the water is fantastic. It's a great card to use if you're just going to, like, hit research station loads. Because um, you're getting your water back fairly quickly. Really, really nice. So, it is on to James, who has five. He was going to go Ixen Engineer, but I think you go Power Play now. And hope to come around and get Ixen Engineer later on. No reason not to do this. And then Lido's going to reveal for four. And I suspect we'll go Guild Chief Admin. And it does. Zazabu likes their shipping. Uh, this battle, is, this combat is going to resolve itself. Um, Oko will take a uh, free Solari. It will be uh, a spice in the ship for Unfussable and a couple of coins for the beast. And we will move on. Wow, Lady just immediately is going to cash in here. So she's going to be looking to... Uh, 
It's just actually going to be she doesn't have access to Swordmaster yet. You have to put the agent down before you get the reward here. I, I hope that Impossible knows that. So unless they're expecting to get to smuggling or because they don't have access to wealth. Interesting. And that's going to be cut off immediately here. So Unit does not find her uh, refined here. So Beast is... Um... Oh no, Beast doesn't have access to... Oh no, Beast went... Um, He went there twice. Of course he went to, um, he went, uh, freaking steel suits, didn't he? So he doesn't have access to shipping either. Wow. So Lido's going to be going there knowing that he's good. Hoping that Unit didn't find it in Desert. So Lido's going to get first access to shipping here. That'll cheer him up. Yeah, needed Unit to, to redraw it. Didn't manage it, so. So Beast will take the initiative here and look to take on some combat here. It is Sort Through the Chaos, which isn't a bad early game. The Mentor action is actually pretty good when no one's got their sword master. That's more valuable. Because of Ambush is in the combat as well, so that's pretty good. He's just going to do Lido things. So Laser needs to pick up the Solari here. That's the problem. So she'll have to pay she'll have to buy Mentat here unless someone intercepts Mentat here, which would be pretty brutal. And you know, what? I actually wouldn't mind seeing Beast intercept uh, Mentat here. I think that'd be really significant. Uh redraw for a laser. Fires diplomacy. Might have to use that anyways. So we'll see how the progression is. Unit's just gonna go ahead and just uh use basin. Just gonna grab the basin, grab a spice, put the troop in, knowing Lido's not getting involved. This is a beast chance to intercept Mentat here, and I would like to see it. Oh, he doesn't. He goes tech. Making sure he gets full persuasion. He's after Duncan Idaho, I think, is the plan here. Obviously, shipping for Zazibu. And the laser will need to... Um, he's, he's reconsidering intercepting Mentat here, is what Lido's considering here. But he's not going to worry about it. So, Mentad it is. And I think the question is about to be asked here. And the answer is, it is Agent First. It is always, always, always Agent First. So, Mentad it is. Gets a spice, though, for the troubles. Paul's convincing argument. There's a lot of persuasion in that hand there. It's pretty good. I wonder if she might be tempted to go, like, early selective breeding here. Getting your deck nice and thin of a laser is pretty nice. He is going to reveal for free. Probably just take a liaison. I don't hate that. I think I would have preferred seeing a pit core entry. Getting the extra money from wealth is really good. And knowing that you're going to get that reliably is really nice. I think I would have preferred that from Mako. Uh, Beast's going to go for Duncan. Lido's going to have two and take the other admin. It just turns up. Very fortuitous. And then back to a laser here. I think there is value in actually going selective breeding here. Especially now Guild Bank is on the row as well. No, just going to go wealth. Okay, that's fine. So five persuasion is going to be it. Guild bankers will be taken 100%. And then, don't know if they'll go court intrigue. Maybe just a liaison. Yeah, liaison. Just going to lock to start uh, buying special flows. Is the plan. Comet resolved as is. So Beast wins it. Second up for Unfussable. A couple of Solari for Yuna. Beast finds his second combat card, by the way. Unfussable also finds a combat card. So that's pretty nice. We'll be moving on here. We are going uh, red and nuts. Already into round three here. And it's the Siege of Arakeen. So a bit of map control available here. The Solari also for second spot is also pretty valuable early on. So there will be some fighting for this. Beast finds power play in his hand. Now, does he power play fold space? Or does he go for like Hardy Warriors or something here? I think he's going to use this for fold space. No, he's going to go steel suits here. I think he, the intention he's going to do steel suits and then he's going to power play afterwards. They also need to wait here, preferably for um, for red, yeah. This is the thing with a laser. Um, so, unfortunately, just information given to laser. It's, it, the only person that benefits any day really is a laser, so it's the way it goes. But yeah, periods just need to wait for laser. Laser doesn't get plays very often, is the thing. So, it is easy to forget that you need to wait for her. It does happen. But ultimately, it's extra information for them. So, you know, the only person that's benefiting in a way is unfussable. So if players aren't paying attention, that's a thing. Uh, Hand-wise, Alina's pulled Guild Admin immediately, which will be kind of annoying. So, kind of curious to see what Lee, how Lee's going to play. Does he just Guild Admin his dagger out immediately? I don't know. 
We'll see what the plan is for Lido. He's a bit of a shame. You want to like find Guild Admin later in your hand. But he would just do it now. You'd rather get the cards into your discard part and then trash them out. But it's what it is. He's considering going full space to block out players here. But he's not going to. Just uh, down and up. Uh, he'll make the push for Spacing Guild. Seems logical. Especially with Lido, you want to be making making a push for one faction specifically a lot of the time. And then use Prudent just to catch up elsewhere and not worry about it. He's making a decision about whether he wants to challenge for alliances here. He has not taken a um, he's not taken a faction bump yet. I think mean, you just got to go spacing and worry about it later. Especially the um, the the throne alliance is about to go bye bye anyway. So so Laser puts down her diplomacy. So she's gonna get Swordmaster now. Curious to know where she's gonna go for her um, thing. Here. She will pay for the um, for the fold space now. Slow for the false base. This isn't bad, but it's about not buying it all the time. You've got to kind of pick and choose. Yuna will take fold space. Um, will take the fold space. So that was opposition to Lido. Beast is just going to grab a load of spice. Is he going to power play selective breeding, maybe? I don't know. I feel like surely he's going Hardy Warriors at some point here, right? I'm not too sure what's going to happen. So Lido... Has given up uh, the dagger, so he's got one action to play. Does he want to draw with fold space, or does he want to just use the plume seat? <laughs> Sorry, and not worry about it. Um, I don't hate just keeping fold space for now. I think it's fine. Um, he's eyeing up hardy warriors. He's never going to win the combat's the problem. He has no intrigues, so Beast can just play him pretty face up here. And Beast has two fa has two intrigues as well, so. Really? He's going to go Carfag to put the troops in and have the in, the intrigue insurance is what the plan is here. Finds calculated higher. I mean, it's not great to see that as as um, as Lido here. But he'd rather get in less troops than sacrifice the faction access to have an intrigue in hand to make himself harder to play against than just going in Hardy Warriors. Which is interesting. Diplomacy for a laser... Um, I don't know if she's going to use it. I don't hate just going wealth here and taking free Solari. I don't totally hate that. She's not going to get any use out of Spice Hunter this game. Or at least this round. She needs to Persuasion with the Fremen to do that. And she ain't going to get it. So she's just going to reveal for a couple of, a couple of spies here. She's going to start with Secrets to start massing Intrigues. Find her second Master Tactician. So two of those in hand. You could put in, like, a whole highlighter and just retreat the whole lot. That's insane. Had it once be fair in an Immortality game, I got, like, both um, of the lose two troops in combat for beetle bumps and specimens. I just went highlighter and just murdered basically everyone. <laughs> it's pretty brutal. Yuna's just going to get some money. Prepping up for the Signet Ring to try and get use out of Final Delivery, which is a very, very powerful ability. Really strong. The sooner you can get that going reliably, the better you are. Seven Solari for those three is not bad. Not bad at all. Unless you can combine it with City Spaces and stuff like that. Beast has power play. He will use it on the Hardy Warriors. Um, he's going to put them in to try and... Um, he's going to hope that he can win this without using an Intrigue, but he, he's going to have to here. So that alliance is taken. Leo will retrieve for one and not worry. So yeah, Beast has got his alliance all underway already, which is really strong for him. Uh, that's going to give him an improved Signet Ring Brutality. Is now improved to two troops that are one with an alliance. Uh, and that's going to be pretty dangerous here. No one's going to be able to challenge him very reliably. Middle combat Leo, I guess. Unit's going to have to probably engage with Beast mainly later on. Um, a laser might just opt to stay out of this. So Spice Mingles is doing absolutely nothing here. Does not have the persuasion to discard this. So I would just use... I mean, you should just use Reconnaissance or Dune Desert Planet. There is no reason not to use Spice Mugglers here. Unless you have a way of getting this second Intrigue. I don't know why you wouldn't just use Dune Desert Planet for this. And just have an extra persuasion in hand. It's kind of kind of unusual. We're not looking at the hand too well here. You could put a troop into Arakeen. 
But again, you should just be using reconnaissance. But the problem is, once you draw it, yeah, now you've drawn it. It's like now you can't change the reconnaissance. You have more information. So I, I don't really know why they're, um... They can't do that. They don't have the persuasion, yeah. They cannot do that. That is not available to them. Unfortunately, I can't tell them that until after they attempt to do it. And the problem is, now they've drawn a card, they can't change and use reconnaissance. So it's a little unfortunate for Unfussable there. Um, but I, I I, can't tell them not to do it. And the players aren't obliged to tell them they can't do it until uh, they've actually attempted to do it. It's, it's one of those unfortunate things. So, where it goes. Um, I would be putting this in. You've got two tacticians. Like, maybe you think there's worlds you might be able to steal this combat or something. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Beast has got two persuade, two intrigues, and you've got one. You could put in the troop and, in theory, have eight battle strength. I wonder if they might consider actually using these. Seems insane, but who knows? They might uh, try and ambush Beast out of nowhere. If it pays off, I mean, that's a massive point. Beast is going to have to act first, though, is the thing. Uh, Beast goes first, so if they won't have information, they'll see if Beast has any battle intrigues. If, if Beast passes, Alaysia, I think, uses both tacticians and thinks she's going to win. But Beast is going to use Ambush first up, so Alaysia's going to get away with this here. If it was, like, Zazubu first, it's a much more difficult spot. Anyways, um, Beast is going to pick up Recruiter here. Just solid, fundamental, um, getting this here. So, Alaysia will reveal three. Should have been four, but isn't. Doesn't really matter. Chonda Entership turns in the row here, by the way. Big, big card here. That's going to be of interest to players. Just the liaison. So Beast will use Ambush to win the combat. It would have been super sick to see James pass to bait out these two cards from a laser. Super sick, but uh, not to be. So it'll be resolved. Beast will take it down. Four coins for Lido. A couple of coins for Ekaz. Uh, for a laser, I should say. And we're going to move on here. Round four beckons. And it's more map country. Imperial Basin is the combat. That water in second place is always very, very juicy. So we'll see how we proceed here. Lido's going to be first. Lido will have to use Guild um, guild Ambassador here to go shipping if they want to do it. They don't have to. You could use Signet Ring. But Guild Ambassador's there. Guild Ambassador's funky. It's a bit cumbersome sometimes to use to discard a card to trash. It's a little fiddly. Of course, does mean your hand gets a little bit smaller. But uh, I actually think this is not a bad time to do it. You've got daggers and such. Um, half your dis half your decks in the discard pile. You just trash one dagger, though. Do you want to discard both daggers as Lido? You want to keep access to um, Mentat. And he has not yet bought Swordmaster. And he's not yet got High Council. So kind of analyzing the situation. You could just get rid of, like, uh, what are you doing? Desert Planets. I don't hate that. You've got plenty of cards that give you um, triangle access as it is. I I honestly reckon I, I, I don't hate just, just doing it and getting rid of, like, um, you've got to discard your dagger, though, is the awkward bit. And he wants to get his sword master. And he's concerned, obviously, Yuna's ready to go sword master as well. So it's a little tricky, this for Lino. But you just got to go, you got to go shipping first. You can't let uh, a Yuna have that. It's too dangerous. You don't have to discard the trash, by the way. Um, anything that has an arrow on it, on the card, um, or anything, even, arrow, even like this, for example, if it's an arrow, it is optional. You're not obliged to do it. You don't have to do it with Guild Ambassador. The thing is, Lido also sees the shipping bump for revealing Guild Ambassador and really wants it. It's the whole reason they got the card was to give reveal it for, um, for shipping. So, you know, it depends what you want to do here. You could Signet Ring and go up and down and grab the Spice and double and just take a bump here. I, if, you, if you want to do it that way, do it that way. I don't hate it. I honestly don't hate just doing that. You know, if you're that unsure using Guild Ambassador, just use your Signet Ring and take Spice. Money, you don't need as much money as other players anyways. So... He's also maybe considering Daggering High Council just to take Cho and Directorship. I think that is also kind of in the mind here. And it is there to be done. By the way, Elaser and Kaz have a Spice of Slow in hand, by the way. She just reveal and call it a day. She has to put a card down, though, interestingly, which is notable. It is the dagger. I have a feeling Elaser is just going to reveal and take um, 
is she just gonna go ahead and just reveal for the spice of flow and call it day? I don't know. What's going on here? Zazu definitely unsure. Not striking me. He's not as happy as this game as the last one I covered. The last one he felt very comfortable, very at ease, you know, pretty happy with things. But Zazu is not, not as happy this game, that's for sure. That's a bit of indecision here. It's a lot of way up, to be fair. Just, just taking high counsel and revealing and shaking show and directorship is pretty good because the odds of someone else, like, just revealing straight for it is very unlikely. It can happen. We have seen it in this tournament. And you're guaranteed giving up Yuna. There's no way Yuna's just going to reveal for Charm. It seems insane here. So Lido kind of unsure what to do here. It's a, it's, it is awkward. Shipping in with Signet Ring is like the easier option. But Charm's ship's right there. And you can virtually guarantee it. But you are giving up a lot to, to get that. Is it worth it for the four bumps? You know, especially with Leo who can catch up anyways with Signet Ring. I think I'd just go shipping. I think I would at this point just probably go shipping. I think now you've taken so long, you know, it's a little suspicious why you haven't already just gone to uh, here. People just checking everyone's decks here. Having a bit of fun. A bit of maths here. He's trying to work out, is it likely anyone else is going to get Choam Dredge? That's what he's trying to work out here. Is anyone else likely to have Choam? If he doesn't go for Choam Dredge ship now, will he? Will someone else grab it instead? That's what he's trying to ascertain here. Can Zazibu hold off for a round and pick it up next round and think that it's going to be safe? Problem is he can't see Yuna's... He doesn't know what Yuna's got, though. So that makes it awkward. A laser, I think, might just straight reveal for the point. I honestly don't know. As bizarre as it is. It's going to be the longest time I think I've ever seen anyone take to go into the shipping. <laughs> and there's a tournament. I mean, I'm not, I'm not having a go at Zazbu here by any stretch of imagination, but uh, it looks like he's just going to go high council. He doesn't, he's he's happy to go high council and just take Cho and direct the ship and call it a day. Giving up a lot for it. Giving up an awful lot for it, but um, that is going to be that. He's going to put a card down here, but it's not like he's going to play it. At least he is some, I, there's no way he's playing. If he's going high council straight away, at most he's going, I don't even see what he would be going for here. I think he's just, he will just be revealing here. To take that long to go high council first. As I, as I say in a lot of these videos, if you see someone do a really weird move, that means they're after something very specific usually. So he's putting the card down as like a, um, kind of like as a balance. Like if you're going to put a card down for whenever you do it. No, Elisa's just going to use, wow, she's not even going to take it. She's just going to grab Mentat with Guild Bankers. Whoa. Maybe Lido was going to go Mentat. That's now been forwarded. Now Lido might feel he has to just straight reveal. He was going for Mentor? What is going on this game? It's a weird round, this. Fedekin's going to be used here to assume he trash the Dune Desert Planet and is done. Up and down for Yuna. Yuna's going to be pretty happy with the extra shipping. She wasn't expecting it. She'll be like, yep, thank you very much. She'll be taking Solari here, most likely, and just get tons of value out of farm delivery here. And Beast is look at this video. What is going on this game? Beast has Signet Ring in hand. Beast needs to go Swordmaster, you'd think, immediately, right? You think Beast has to go Swordmaster first. The question is, do you Swordmaster with Signet Ring? I actually think you do. Like, the, you get the troops in Garrison, and they're just there. I, I actually don't think it really matters at this point. If they're in Garrison or not. Depends how much you want to try and deceive other players. But I think Signet Ringing is, is fine here. You could also use your dagger. I don't hate it. I think Eva's fine. Depends how much you want to commit into this combat here. It's a very strange game. I think I would probably just do that with Swordmaster with the Signet Ring, I think, and kind of reevaluate. But uh, again, you can go either way. Everyone has to be having a nice, good look for everyone's decks. We'll see how we're going to move on here. 
Beast does have memo quarters, although whether Beast... The thing is, memo quarters is actually very difficult to actually get the endgame point in Rise of X. Like, getting three influence in all four influence tracks is very difficult to achieve that. You're typically getting it more just specifically for the, the straight bump at the time. Whoa! And Beast Raban says, I don't need a Swordmaster. I'm going to get me a Dreadnought. Wow! Okay, is he going to pick up wind traps at the same time? X Engineer is still up in the row. No, he's going to rethink that. Yeah, you got to go Swordmaster here. That seems much more standard, but interesting that he was considering that. That will be noted. So Lino is back in the same position again here. Does he redraw Arakeen? Is it worth it? He's now looking at his own deck and he's trying to work out. What are my last two cards, and am I going to get um, to get uh, my eight point back if I go Arakeen? The answer is yes, he will. He's not in any danger of that. So he will go Arakeen here, I imagine. And then he'll look to uh, reveal for Churn Directorship. He, he wants the water here, is what, what Lido wants. He really wants the water, so... And here's the Arakeen. So again, really strange term, but... Apparent, it should be pretty apparent what's going on here. He will be fine for Chondra's ship. He's glad he got the maps right, but he was fine. Just trying to maximize the turn here, but uh, you know, it took a long time for it. There's no time in these games. They can take as long as they want, within reasonable reasonableness. So Elisa's this is a really weird spot for Elisa. Elisa has all of these actions, and she's not got a very good hand for all these actions. So this is kind of weird. So, Dagger is out. She's going to go ahead and grab... Um, is she going to grab Restricted Ordnance? No, she's just going to wait. Just going to put it down, take the spice. Yuna's going to go steal suits to pick up some water and put some troops in, as I would be doing, for sure. Beast's got a couple actions still. Beast is going to start muscling in on... Uh, he's going to take the ton of spice here. So, 10 spice for Beast, which is pretty good. He'll put those in. Lido will reveal and take Choem. And then Elazer. Elazer, I really don't know what Elazer's going to do here. Like, Elazer's got two actions to go, but she hasn't got any way of drawing cards. So, I really don't know what Elazer's plan is going to be. Do you just go Carfag, I guess? I think Carfag is the only place she can actually go. She could also get Dreadnoughts. Do you go Dreadnought with Elazer y Kaz and then go into Carfag and put it in? I, I mean, you've got both tacticians, and there is a victory point in hand um, in Imperial Basin. I actually don't hate it. Dreadnought, take wind traps. Go Carfag. You've got two tacticians. I think there's definitely worlds where you can imagine you're going to win the combat here. Now, as it is, Beast has 11 strength, um, as it is total. You're going to have three, five, six. You're going to have 11 as well, plus if you find anything at Carfag. I actually think it's not outrageous. I actually think it's not outrageous. It also means you can go research station next round, and that's what we see here. That's exactly what we're going to see here. No, doesn't buy wind traps. I think I would have liked to have picked that up. I think that one would have been quite nice here. You're just going to reveal for four, take... um. Take Guild Ambassador. Deck's getting a little, little sizable. Beast has one more action to go here. If the Dreadnought had come out, that would have probably created further action for a laser. We'll see what the plan is. A laser might just reveal for six, by the way. But she did buy the Dreadnought still, so Beast is going to be a little perturbed by this. Does Beast just go Carfag to block a laser from any nonsense here? It sucks. You really want to reveal uh, Duncan here, though. You want to reveal him for the water and swords, but you could go to Carfag and just keep a laser out of this combat. She doesn't have water. See, she can't go hardy warriors. Um, he's just going to smuggle. He's going to hope that 11 strength is enough. This is going to be interesting here. I think we might see a tie. It looks pretty likely. Um, they might want to um, move their cargo. And here comes... Laser does not find extra strength here. And we're going to move on. 
He's having a chat about Chondretship here. So this is going to be kind of unfortunate. So Alaze is going to use Tactician. Beast is going to surely blackmail. And then Alaze is going to be in a weird spot. Does she use Tactician again to tie? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, just denying a point against Beast doesn't sound bad. Thing is, Alaze is yet to score here, which is a bit of a problem. Full persuasion it is. Oh, she has five. Oh, she's going to grab X-Engineer as a bit of a denial pick, I think this is. Just keeping out of other players' hands. But a laser's deck is getting kind of big here is the problem. So, a laser will go first. A laser will use Tactician. Beast will respond with Blackmail. A laser passes! No way does she pass. Wow! She just gives up the victory point. Wow, you've got to at least charge Raban here. Wow. I am a little surprised from Unfussable here. I really thought you've got to put one in. And if Beast just passes, then you take the point. You don't know what that is. Wow. How does a laser not put in Tactician? I am fascinated. We might have to ask about the end of the game here. Very interesting. That seems kind of insane. Maybe he assumes that Beast must have something behind. But you've got two tacticians. If he's got an ambush, like, you're good. Maybe he's concerned about Private Army, all that spice, or Allied Armada. But I think you've got to charge him. Interesting. Interesting. Well, regardless, Yellow's going to win the combat here. Red? Uh. Oh, I see. So... I think there's some fun here going on. Oh, boy. So I think there was maybe some order sequencing issues going on here. And there's players are now working out what's going on with intrigues. I have a funny feeling I might get called into this. You know, again, as I mentioned in these videos, I, I'm here to commentate the games. I'm not here to police them. I'm not going to hear... Like, if something does something that is illegal, I'll point and I see it, I'll point it and say, you can't do this. Um, but, uh, this could be a bit awkward, this. We'll see what happens. I mean, as far as, like, sitting here looking, it looked like Unfossible had passed. So I don't know quite what's going on here. I'm a little unsure. I guess we're gonna find out. All right, so it looks like that uh, the players have decided that they're, they're going to allow a laser to play the intrigue here. So Tactician gets played. Blackmail comes in to respond here. Black has... Uh, Yellow needs to lose a, uh, a faction bump somewhere. A laser will tie. Hold on. Uh, blue... Yellow needs to lose a, a faction bump here. A laser's now played to retie, and that will be that. So they've sorted themselves out, so... Players will tie up. Your laser will deny the victory point to Beast, which I think is fine. You'd rather just win it straight, but I think denying the point here is, is significant enough. I think it's okay. And so we'll move on. I was not needed in the end. Okay, round five then. It is Trade Monopoly here. Now, first place will be of great interest, but second place is also fine, although there is a lot of water already on the board, so... This is a little bit of value. Let's see what goes on. Your laser, of course, will be first, so we we'll want to be putting cards down. Uh, looks like she's probably got spy trades, so she could be looking to go. I wonder if a laser is just gonna just hit Hardy Warriors immediately here, and then spice trade something away. I don't even hate that. I mean, that's fine. Yuna's got both fold space cards in hand. Has not found her signet ring. It's somewhere in there. I'm pretty sure. Beast's hand is pretty bad. Lido's is not great either, so everyone kind of scrambling a little bit in this round. There's a load of spice in the Imperial Basin. This would definitely be of interest to players. A lot of good cards in the row as well here. Mahayim's still somehow there. Uh, Gurney Halleck is there as well. Smuggler's Fopter's valuable to some players, so... All playing to play for here. A laser does need to start making some, some inroads here. It's turn five. It's round five now, start, and she's yet to score. Um, is a laser. So, 
deciding against it. It's going to put the dagger down first. So it looks like they're going to make a punt for Holtzman, it seems. Looks like Holtzman's going to be the play here. She has ex uh, They have the Engineer now, so obviously there is interest to grab that. Yuna's going to grab her Swordmaster. Beast is 10 spice and has no, no way to spend any of it. Unless he decides to go tech negotiation and maybe take restrictive. But the problem is, it's like, it's really difficult to get a lot of value out of that. And I don't think Winchamps has a lot of value anymore now. A, you don't have X Engineer. And B, there's plenty of water on the board. So, awkward spot for the Beast here. Do you just consider Mentating as Beast to look to improve your hand here? I don't even hate it. What are you doing with your money here? You've got your sword mask. I don't think High Council is that relevant to you in this game. I honestly think going Ment out here is not terrible. Try and pull out one of your better cards. And if you don't pull a better card out, like, you're going to get access to cities. You're going to get access to other stuff here. You can't go interstellar shipping by. Unit gave up the interstellar shipping to go sword master. So looking just a deprived leader of actions, which is notable. What's a weird trading of um, sword master going on here? Kind of surprised Yuna went Swordmaster before um, before Interstellar. I guess just happy just to try and keep Lita's actions to as small as possible. Is, is James up next? James has got a, has a decent position here, but he knows that Zazavu is right behind and doesn't want to give it up here, so... This probably gets to be made. There's a lot of work to do here, but it is an awkward hand for Beast. That's why I like... I don't hate Dagger here. And Dagger also, like, screws with Zazabu a bit as well. Because he wants to be hitting Menta as much as possible. If you take it here, that's kind of annoying for him. You would think. Don't know. We'll see what the intention is. Like, again, you don't have to. Well, I think your hand is just bad enough where I just don't hate it. He's going to go Arakeen to redraw instead. Finds convincing argument and will put in the troop. So, kind of a bit of a, Going Arakeen first like that, probably an omission that his hand is not very good. You know, we'll be able to go interstellar shipping here and we'll surely be using... I think you probably use your ring for it and just use that to catch up now. You don't have to. The problem for Lido is there's only one faction he can actually um, he can actually catch up on, and that's the Fremen. It's the only one he can catch on. All the rest he is tied or leading. It's the only issue with Chone Directorship for Lido sometimes is it does make your Signet Ring a little bit more awkward to use sometimes. Don't have as many options. Might be a, well, might be a good problem, to be fair. Lido is considering Mentating here, I think. Surely not. Like, you gave up instead of once. It seems insane to give it up twice. I mean, last time you gave it up for, um, for... Maybe he also wants to deny Holtzman to a laser. But decides against... I, mean, I think shipping is probably the right call here. We'll take the spice to pay to catch up with the Fremen. It's the only faction he can do with. And then we'll take the shipping bump on the Emperor, which I think is fine. I think I would take Emperor. You could also go into uh, Bene Gesserit. But I think I like Emperor a little more to kind of like put um, Yuna a bit awkward. And uh, Yuna doesn't really want to be hitting wealth spaces at this point in the game. So I think taking the bumps this way around, I, I, I think I like this. I think this is a better, this is a sharper, sharper way to play this. Eliza will take Holtzman, as was the intention. So only cost four spice. Oh, actually, you're going to cost three. Uh, so, yeah, one for the negotiator, one for the space, and then one for the ability there. So, yeah, Hudson for three spice isn't bad. Invasion ships is the next uh, next car, uh, check to come out here. Don't know if it will see use in this game. Unit will take the Mentat. And we need to draw again. Hand's still pretty bad here. So, yeah, you're making a definite point of trying to deprive Leo of as many actions as possible here. Especially knowing that Leo wants to obviously go Mentat a lot. And Yuna will see the card draw there and will think, uh, be kind of happy of that. Is Lee just going to go Hagger Basin, I guess? He might just go smuggling, but I think I prefer Hagger Basin, you know. This, it's not a bad combat here. 
you think you'd probably get your water back minimum. James up next. James' hand still sucks. He was maybe slightly hoping to get his way to uh, Hagger Base in here. Now, not a, this is, might seem insane. Does maybe Beast consider going invasion ships with a Dreadnought? Is it that outrageous to do that? Get a really big garrison. You've got to decide what you're doing with your spice. Now, you want to be hitting Highliner once, you would imagine. And then you need to find a second trip to Fold Space somewhere to get that. But I honestly think Invasion Ship here is, is with Dreadnought is good. And I think that's what we're going to see here. And I, I like this. Oh, he goes Restrictive. Ooh. Oh, I don't like that. You've got to get High Council. Where are you going to get the money for that? Ooh, I'm not, not a fan of that from, from Beast. I think I would just seem much better and just have the troops in immediately. Never mind. Lino finds the victor is his um, intrigue here at Carfag, by the way. I don't know if he's actually going to get that fired off here at any point. He'd love to. But it's kind of out of his hands if he does. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised that I really thought Beast would go invasion ships. I just think restrictive. The Four Swords is nice, but you got to get High Council. Are you getting it to deny Leto? I feel like there's a lot of counterpicking going on in this game. I think that's my impression of this. Feels like a lot of people are doing things to stop other people doing stuff, which you don't see a lot in um, in this game. I like it when you do see it, to be fair. Like, people don't do it enough um, in Rise of X kind of getting in the way of other people and sort of denies and such. But we've seen a lot of that. The X-Engineer take as well for a laser, just keeping it away from B, stuff like that. Very funky. And that's not to say that a laser won't get value X-Engineer. And now, like, she's kind of fortunate. There's loads of cheap techs here. Minimix the next one. Wind traps as well. So there are worlds she actually manages to uh, get X-Engineer to fire off for the reveal and take the point. But it's going to be tough. The time is running out. A laser will go Hardy Warriors here. Does mean Spice Trader is now finally active. She has the water in the back pocket with water peddlers. Now, does she put it in? Hmm. With no backup, I... Uh, it's kind of horrible. You're not getting a ton of reward for it. I think I'm okay keeping them back. Putting in one, I guess, is fine. But just put a bit of pressure on Beast. But I think Beast, when he puts the Dreadnought in, he's probably going in anyways. You're just going to smuggle. Beast has seven persuasion. Beast might be eyeing up buying something from the row. The problem is he's got to go for his deck to see it again. So if anything he buys in the row, he might see maybe once. So I think, like, you could even consider going, like, research station or something here. Thinking that, worse than worse, you're getting your war back? You're going to get back up to two? Is that even that ridiculous? But then there's a lot of cards you don't want to see. You don't want to see diplomacy. You don't want to see a signet ring. Um, you know, recruit and stuff like that. So it's like, you, you could draw, but you're never going to get Spice Must Flow here. It's almost impossible. So that feels really bad. You could just go Hagger Basin. No, he does! Finds a dagger. Dune Desert Planet. Uh, okay, that's not terrible. He finds his diplomacy, which is a bit unfortunate, but he can live with that. It could have been a lot worse stuff. So his, his recruiter is fine. And his uh, his signet ring is also fine. Didn't run any of those. But yeah, Beast is definitely struggling in the faction access department. He's got one alliance and that's it. James really needs to find these faction visits elsewhere. So a laser's going to have six. Beast is going to have six. And Lino's going to win this by the scrap of the neck here. Which means Leo is going to get to the victor off. He's kind of fortunate here, maybe. A little, little lucky, but he'll take it. Yuna has an action still, by the way, but she's just going to go high council. She ain't getting involved. Leo perhaps a bit annoyed when he sees how this works out. He's not found his recruiter, but uh, it's the way it goes here. Can you see what else he had here as well? Which order? Recruiter was the next one. He was looking for Duncan, is what he was finding. Duncan was bottom of the row. But does pick up seven to pick up Shaika Lude, which is also very scary in the beast's hands here. Very scary. Yuna's going to pick up power play. That's going to be really dangerous as well. Look at all these counter visits from Yuna. Crazy. Don't see that often. And Lido's just going to win it and take the uh, take tons of goods here. So a little fortunate for Lido, but he will not be complaining. This is going to secure the Emperor Alliance, you would imagine, as well. 
So he's got pretty much all of his alliance points. He now needs to start securing points elsewhere is the thing. No, Lido's just going to go up twice. He's going to prep for attacks here. Wow, Minimic must be the plan. I think that's what he's going to go for here. Going to to smuggle immediately. If Beast gets in the way of the smuggling, that's going to... Look at all the swords for the Beast! Oh, but Shai Halud needs a Fremen card to have those swords do anything, and it doesn't. Wow, okay. Here we go, then. So, it is uh, Desert Power is the next one. T3 is coming soon. Unit is going to go up and down. So, up and down it is. Uh, this will fire off the Signet Ring as well. Gives her the point at the Fremen. She'll then use Final Delivery. I tell you what, I'm a little surprised Yuna didn't go up and down, do both bumps for the Emperor and take that alliance. I think that's a miss. Oh, Yuna could have been really aggressive here and get in the way of, um, get in the way of the Emperor here and deny that to Leto. He was clearly setting up for it. I think you've got to try and combat him more physically here, but decides against it. I think that's a missed opportunity there from Oko. I would like to have seen that. Um, by the way, given the chance for Ixen Engineer here, finally put down. Force Spice taken from B, so just depriving one here. Highliners could be incoming. He's got the Fletcher Envoy. A lot happening here. He almost wanted to see Shai Halud next round, to be fair, and then dispatch an Envoy with that. That would have been really disgusting. Send that to Highliner, trash a card, send in like nine troops. That would have been really nasty. Lido's up first, though. So Lido finally can access his sword. He's the only person that hasn't got it, so he can get it when he wants. He's got Cho in his hand, which is really awkward here. Does Lido consider just going, like, Mentat to look to buy Spice Must Flow? You don't need to go Swordmaster anymore. Like, you're the only person that hasn't got it, and there's no voice. So you can pick up Swordmaster whenever the heck you want. You do not have to do it now. People forget this sometimes. People just think, I haven't got Swordmaster, I've got to get it. But if everyone else has got theirs, like, you can get it whenever. I think I like going Mentat here instead with Fold Space and um, hope to hit Spice was Flow. But then he figures he's also got Calculated Higher. So it's a little tricky, but you can look Calculated Higher next hand. He also wants to go Smuggling is the other issue that Lido's got here. I think Lido wants to go Smuggling and hopes to find Spice must Flow. So he's trying to work out his hand here and work out what two cards he's got remaining. Um, and he will work out that if he can work out a deck correctly, he can work out he can't get Spice Must Flow unless he goes Selective Breeding. And then we get back into Counterplay territory. So Selective Breeding is going to be first here. Wants to get the Spices, so feels it's more important. So that's going to pick up his, um, his two other cards here. That's going to give him, uh, eight Persuasion. Six plus the, um, plus the High Council for two. So, further action need, he's going to use this for Swordmaster, I guess. But the problem is then, is that all he's going to recycle his hand here. It's going to be hard for him to find all these action accesses. That's going to be a little tricky. Laser is up. And Laser has Guild Bankers in hand. She really wants to get use out of that. I actually wouldn't hate seeing a Laser go smuggling with Fold Space here. And then use Ix and Engineer to pick up a tech. And then reveal and just just take the spice must flow. I actually don't even hate that as lazy. You don't have to use all six. The first time you hit Guild Bankers, you turn down getting the spice must flow, which I which was reasonable. But I think this is the play here for a laser. I think I would smuggle. I think you got to keep that away from Leader. He gave it up on it. You could do something else as well. You're not obliged to. Um, but you've got to keep X and Engineer open for tech negotiation. No point in you going there first. Oh no, you don't have to. That's a lie. You could go tech negotiation with Fold Space and pick up one of the cheap techs. But the problem now is you want to go Hagger Basin um, with with uh, X Engineer, and that's been taken. So it's now a bit awkward here. I wouldn't be surprised to see her go tech negotiation and takes um, takes the wind traps to get her the extra water, and then X Engineer to Great Flat with the two water and take the tech. And that's exactly what we're going to see here. I think. I think I like this. I think it's the way around this. It will give you two water. No one's... Oh, you have water, extra water anyway. You don't even need it. You've got War Peddler. Pick up Minimic then. Minimic's good. Minimic with Guild Bankers is great. So it will be taken. Spice Allies is the next tech. Oh my gosh. Elise Recast is going to pinch that with X Engineer. That's a massive find. 
Oh, but someone might go there first. Oh, Beast could... No, oh, no, Beast can't get there. He doesn't have the money. And Yuna doesn't have the spice. And Leno can't do it either. Wow, what a find for a laser. Spice Satellite is going to get up right back in the game here. Wow, what a find. Huge. Yuna's going to pick up the water here. Looking to go great flat. But a laser's going to get there first. Yuna finds power play. Big card. Big find. And that means the Fremen Alliance is now in danger. It is all happening here. This game has just sparked into absolute life. And now Beast is going to be concerned. But he can't go hardy worries. He has no water. So what does Beast do now? There's one alliance. The one faction he's visited. He's about to. He's in danger of losing. There's nothing he can do about it. So what does Beast do here? You've got all this spice. Oh, man. It's horrible. You want to be saving for Highlands, I guess. You can't buy tech. Spice Alice would be so good for you, but there's no way to get there. Man, Alaysia's had great fortune. I think Beast is looking, and I think that's why. Might be able to be looking combat strength, but I don't think so. I think he's trying to work out, is there a way to get spy satellites? The short answer is, it ain't happening, brother. There's not a lot to do here. I think you just got to recruit to, like, Carfag, I guess. Get two troops in, get an intrigue, and I guess reassess. I don't really see what else you do here. I think you want to be revealing Duncan. He's maybe considering going Siege, but you might as well just use Recruiter for the troop. Save the water. You're paying a water for a card draw at Siege? I don't think that's worth it. I think I'd just be using the Recruiter and calling it a day. Shy Halud's sitting in the hand, though. And this is where it's also awkward. Beast wants to get Shy Halud off, but he'd have to go Basin now, which he doesn't really want to do. He's also gathering more Spice. Oh, Beast hates the fact that Steel Suits went. I think the plan was he was going to go Steel Suits with Shy Halud. And then trash like Dune Desert Planet. But Unit went there first. So, nothing that could be done about that. As he decided to go Hagger Basin first. And now he's got to deal with this situation. Beast also still wants money for High Council boy, But still doesn't have no access to it. I'm still surprised he took the High Council. I'm uh, restricted ordinance. I'm really shocked. Recruiter Carfax seems the only logical, I think it's the only choice you can really take here. Maybe Carfax, or maybe Siege, maybe Arakeen. No, he's deciding against it. Indecision. I don't think smuggling is good enough here. He's considering smuggling to get the money to get for High Council. The only other person that hasn't got High Council is Red. And Red doesn't like they're going High Council anytime soon. So if we get those swords online... Yeah, very tricky, this. It's just obviously a one drip. It's fine. There's no time limit. I'll tell you, stick as long as they so need. Be honest, in a way, on a commentary side of things, I'll just say it's kind of nice in a way when, like, you have these long times. One of the problems you have, especially with commentary, a lot of the time is that the play goes so fast that it's hard for us to keep up here. But it's nice to have these situations where we can actually ask, like, kind of uh, give you ideas of what's going on. He's going to go... He's going conspire! Oh, it's actually a nice one. Oh, and he's fine. Sleeper must awaken! That's a point. Hmm. Well, don't maybe Highlander is being changed here. Lido is gonna go to in for way for Tex. He's starting to buy dreadnoughts. It also allows him to draw another card, so he can look to try and hope to pick up the spice must flow here. Needs us needs one. I think he has got cards that don't get in there. He's got daggers. He's fine. He gets reconnaissance, so he's happy. Wind trap's taken for the second water. Again, hoping to go great flat end or research station. But um, it's not an issue here. Like, a laser will be taking water pedals and will be going great flat and will be taking spice satellites. Surely. I would not. I would be shocked to see anything else here. I think it's the only move. I think it's the only move. It gets things in the online and it gets you spy satellites when you have you're way behind on points. I think you gotta do it. You've got a you've got a um spices flow in the back pocket as well, you, which you obviously need to start doing to fund your Holtzman engine. In some worlds, that's like four victory points and two actions. Like you can't really turn that down. 
And I don't think there's enough value for Research Station. I think you've got to do it. I really don't think there's any other reasonable play to make here. You cannot let Spy Satellites go somewhere else. That is terminal to your game here. Absolutely terminal. Or is a laser considering going Research Station in the hopes to find two Spice Must Flows? Gotta no no you really gonna do this for artillery? You're not going to mining just without buying the spice. This seems insane. Oh no, she does, of course, it's just one sim. I apologize. Yes, of course. That's a good spot actually there. So again, once a bit ahead gives an extra spice there, so it's fine. She can pick up spice that's that way. Okay, I apologize. I was wrong. How often, how often you see a laser you can. So it picks up by satellites regardless. So it finds another way to get there, great. So it saves the water, awesome. The important thing was she got it. And that was absolutely crucial. That would have been a crazy miss there. So great news there. Here comes the steal for the Throne Alliance. Beast is going to be very, very upset here. So that alliance is gone. Beast loses a point. Unit goes up to five. James's game is starting to um, come away from him. So that's taken. Beast now will surely be getting involved here in combat and looking to... Uh, he, he feels like he's now going to win this victory point. And the truth is, he probably does. She doesn't put in. Wow. Just decides to um, do that. Here comes Shai Halud then. Just shy alluding to there and just garrisoning up. He's going to wait for um, the future. Okay, so two troops garrisoned. Thing is, I don't need to do anything. I've got swords in hand and no one's challenging me. You might be right. Leader's going to cash in and buy the Spiceless Flow. Gets a load of Solari. Now we'll take the Alliance, surely. Surely you take the Alliance. I don't think there's any way... He, I, I, I think you... I would be probably taking this. Ooh, is Duke Leader getting greedy? Is Duke Leader getting a little greedy here? I think he is. I think to try and challenge both alliance at the same time is asking for a bit of trouble. Sides against it, just taking the Emperor to end up to eight points here. I think that's the right call. You've got distance. He's going to go ahead and take the artillery as well, just on the cheap. Might as well. Shuttle fleet turns up here. That might. I don't think that's going to get bought at this point in the game. I think it's too late. All these little super expensive techs here. Flagships there as well. But I don't expect to see any of them be taken at this point. Zazu has got a um he's got a he's got distance on hand, so he doesn't need to be taking too many risks here. Play it fairly safe. So a laser is gonna be up. A laser still has an action to go. Um and I think she's gotta put some troops in here and put some pressure on Beast. Beast decided not to garrison troops. I think you've if you feel compelled to get involved here with like a trip to Carfag, probably. I don't think there's any reason to... You have a persuasion. So in theory, you, you, she's considering... May, maybe they're considering going research station. They, they need five persuasion out of three cards. But I, I think that would be insane. I think Carfag has got to be the play here, and it is. Hope to find a battle intrigue. I tell you what. I tell you what, that might actually encourage putting the troop in here. It's not going to be enough. Beast is going to be good by a sword. But that will definitely encourage putting this in here. So Beast is going to be uncomfortable right now. Not enjoying this. But he's going to be good just as it turns out. So seven for Yuna for reveal. Um, I don't know what you take here, really. Whatever you want, really. Might just go the Azons to buy Spice. I don't really like that. Good is good, but again, the problem is, whatever you buy, like, you've got to go through your whole deck here, so you may never even see it. It's more of a denial pick, really. So, Gurney taken. 
Beast will reveal, have three swords, grab a water back, and is going to be fractionally good here. Only just. Will not be buying. I don't think they should buy anything. I would not buy assassination. Wait, how do they have three? Huh? Yeah, definitely can't buy that, so we will uh, just put that card back, reshuffle the debt, see the best way to do it. They definitely don't have free persuasion. <laughs> that is uh, that is not correct, so best way to do it, put this back, reshuffle, um, and then carry on. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's the only thing he must have done. I don't know, Duncan, for two persuasion and two, two swords, that's a pretty good reveal. I get behind that, it's a good card. Yeah, 100% you should shuffle the deck. It doesn't matter what it is. Like, you put it back on and you shuffle that deck. Absolutely, 100% of the time. Anyway, so a laser will buy a Spice Plus Flow. So getting uh, getting work onto Holtzman Engine. Also, it's going to pick up Assassination Mission to cull it just to take the points. I don't like this. I don't know if the, it's worth it for the money. You've already got 16 cards in your deck. I really think you're better off just culling other cards out rather than just turning that Intrigue into free Solari. I don't like that. I really think that's not worth it. If you've got like a deck of like 10 cards, fine. But I think when you've got that much, I think you should, um, you should be fine. So James holds on for the victory point just... Needs to put the Dreadnought somewhere. He'll put it on the Basin. No, he'll put it on Carfag. I think I'd probably just put it on the Basin, to be honest. There. Alright, here we go then. So we begin action. Oh, he should have put it on the Basin. He had a bonus troop. Imperial Basin is the combat here. For the first of the tier threes. Um, Leader's going to want to just try and close this out before any people ever can catch up with um, with combat points. As we will think, he's probably good for the win here, and he probably is, barring weirdness. The problem is, though, is that he's going to have to either completely barrel the um, the Bene Gesserit, which he should probably do. Uh, he also has um, Smuggler's Foptra as well, so, you know, Leader should be all right here, probably. Beast has Highliners. It is active. No one else looks like they're going to be anywhere near it. So it's, it's a very Intrigue-like game, in, in, which is very curious at this point in the game. There's only four Intrigues amongst the table. So players playing largely face-up combat-wise. It's mainly about their swords. Beast obviously wants to get High Council, and they want a Highliner here. Um, so it's about what order they want to do it. They also wouldn't hate taking Mentat, but I don't think they're going to pick it. So, research station first. Wow. Didn't expect that. Oh, he has eight persuasion in hand, does the beast. Wow. I guess he figures I'm going to go high council, and I'm going to go diplomacy. So, let's try and get a spices flow with the victory and just take a ton of points. I don't even hate that. All eggs in one basket, but fine. Lido's going to be up here. Lido surely's got to go selective breeding first, right? Trash the dagger. And then just use... Oh, no, but then you can't get calculated. You can't use the Mentat then. That's a problem. Lido's got all this money. He's got nothing to do with any of it. He's already got Swordmaster on High Council. Do you go Secrets and Mentat? Oh, that feels horrible. Lido feels like he's got to get a Spice Must Slow here. Second ring is doing nothing. There's nothing to catch up from. I think you gotta, you've got to go... Oh, he's going to go here first for the interstellar shipping. No, he's just going to take the spice. Is Duke Leto considering Highliner here? And just win it through combat? Surely not. And he figures that if Leto... If Beast goes Highliners, he's going to... He can't counter... If, he can't block it. Wow. Interesting. So he has seven persuasion hand as Lido, so he needs more work. Maybe he figures that Beast is surely going to respond with Highliner, so he goes selective instead. Trying to misdirect, I guess. 
We'll see. Elisa goes Carfax. Finds skill bankers again, by the way. But doesn't have enough persuasion for it. She can't go high council. Here comes the highliner. So Beast is going to pivot to the selective breeding. Beast is going to throw it all in. He kind of has to. He feels he's got to. Yuna went and took Mentat, by the way. Denying that to Lido. So again, um, making a point here is um, Yuna of trying to block um, and cut off um, Lido's actions as much as possible here. Guess remembering the first game and deciding going to do something about it. A bit of policing. She actually has enough to buy sponsors flown, by the way, right now. I wonder if that might influence the decisions here. Hmm. Liam again still has access to Swordmaster when they want. Surely Lita's just got to go selective breeding here. He's going to have six persuasion, so he needs to find three. Surely selective breeding is the way forward, right? How do you not go selective breeding here? Gives you progress on the track you can still get the alliance for? I feel like it's the only... I feel like it's the only way forward here, right? You got what you wanted. Beast has gone Highliner before he wanted to. I don't think it really matters. Beast was going to go over there or um, or High Council. It didn't really matter which order he does it in. Beast didn't really need to throw it all in, by the way. Beast obviously would have preferred to have gone High Council. What I would love to have seen, it would have been curious to see if Beast had gone High Council and called Lito out on his bluff. And dared him to go Highliner. I don't think you can do that, to be honest. It would have been kind of ridiculous. But putting him all in, I think it's a little unnecessary. But it, it doesn't matter. It's, 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 it's largely a moot point. I think, you could, I think you could have possibly kept like one or two back, knowing that you're going high count, so I think 20 strength's probably good. <laughs> Anyways. I think mean, Lee's just got to go set to breeding here. I really don't think there's any other play. What else are you doing here? You want to close this game out as soon as possible, right? That seems a reasonable way to go about it. You could also go flagships. That's the other thing he's considering. Is he, does he just go flagships? All you could do as Lido is you could go selective breeding, like trash your Fopter, and then look to use your dagger at tech negotiation. Or does Lido consider going shuttle fleet first? I think shuttle fleet's on the eyes here. If he could go do two actions in a row... Um, Lido would go slip to breeding and he would go to tech negotiation and pick up shuttle fleet, gets the alliance for the Bene Gesserit, and hopefully finds his way to nine persuasion, by the flow, ends the game. That's what Lido wants to do here. It's all his spice though. Do you think anyone else is going tech negotiation at this point in the game? I would say no. I mean, if, all the techs are super expensive and I just don't see anyone really blocking you that often. Everyone's got their own stuff they want to do here, so... And that's the way I would proceed with Zazabu. But I think you got to do tech negotiation probably first? Uh, uh, probably first? Yeah, I think you do tech negotiation first, because worst... I mean... Is anyone going to go slip to breeding if you don't go there? I don't... I don't really think so. I, I don't see any other way. If you want to end this game this round, that's how you do it. Shuttle fleet, tech negotiation... Uh, and then you go select to breeding afterwards. You just hope no one goes there. Now, as it turns out, no one can go there. Like, everyone has... Everyone's blocked it. Their concern is that Yuna has to, has access to select to breeding. That's what's really concerning them, I think. I think that's the that's what's going on with Zazabu. The point is, I want to look at uh, Yuna's discard... But it's like, that kind of gives it away a little bit, so I'm not going to do that. But I think that's how I would proceed here. I think, I, I don't see any other, anything else to do here. I think, I think that's fine. I think it's fine. I honestly, I, you know, and you just hope no one gets in the way. If no one gets in the way of you, you win the game. Almost certainly, right? I think he wants to do selective breeding first, though. To make sure he's going to have nine. He's kind of unsure about his order of things. 
But I, I just don't see any of her actions. You could just go flagships and just take the point, though. And then get involved in combat. But I really don't think that's valuable enough. If it was, um, like, uh, or the one where you pay some resources to get victory points, then fine. Because there's a victory point for second place, and you could fight for that and probably win it that way. But I, I really don't see anything else as Azibu here. Well, we've been here for about, about three minutes now or so. It's a pretty impressive tank. One of the longest tanks I've seen in a Doom Imperium game for some time. Obviously, just like... I think this is a, one of those cases, perhaps, of a bit of analysis paralysis, where you, you, you just get into your mind, maybe, sometimes, about what you should do and what you should not do, and then you, like, you go into so many permutations, you kind of then are just... Maybe lose a bit of focus what you're doing in the first place. I don't know. Depends how you want to look at it. But, um, but yeah, we have been here for nearly four minutes. Leo Olmney does decide to go for flagships. And he's going to decide he's going to win this on the battlefield. Either if not this turn, then next turn. So flagship it is. And then we are going to move on. I've got to remember what's going on in this game now. <laughs> uh, disposal facility is the, next, um, is the next tech in play here. All right, so a lasery Kaz had put down the dagger for um, for that. That is not going to be used now. It has nowhere to go. He's going to go ahead and use his signet ring to do that. So Lido giving up on this. Is he going to actually legitimately try and win this on the field of battle now? It's pretty ambitious. But yeah, dagger revealed for a laser for her one step ahead ability, which I physically cannot be played. There's no way she can put it. And there's surely no way she's getting a second dreadnought just for the spice. I think that's that seems insane. The problem for a laser is she really wants to get another um she really wants to get another spice must flow. And I don't think there's any way she can do it. She's only got four persuasion. She can't go tech negotiation. Uh she can't go research station. Um, I would probably look to just play Guild Bankers for wealth. And I would just, just do it now and just take the point. Although you have Spice Alice, you don't need to do that, actually. Hmm. And the problem is, this is the last time you're going to see Guild Bankers. You've got nine cards in your hand here, so you feel, like, compelled to get value out of Guild Bankers now. But I honestly don't think there's any way to make this work. I don't see anything at all. Unit probably cannot believe how much how much uh, um, use of 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 uh, instead of the shipping she's had this game. She's probably absolutely stunned. So we'll see what Laser wants to do here. Obviously, that can't be played, so she's got to put it away. But she might as well do something. Even just going like spice or stuff. I guess. And just pick up spice. Uh, I don't know. You kind of want to save the water, though, for... Um... Man, there's just no real good options here, is there? This hand is hideous right now. It is doing a whole lot of nothing. Feels kind of bad. Feels kind of bad here. So, very of course, Laser has three points at the moment, but she has three in the back pocket from Spice Satellites. So she's going to go smuggling here. And I think this is her smuggling High Council, basically. And, uh, you know, she can't get there this round, but it's, like, helping for next round. She's still got Holtzman Engine, and she wants to get more value out of that. So needs to find a Spice Slow next round. It's basically double value. And you've got to assume there's going to be a next round. You'd hope there's a next round. So Yuna up next. Yuna has got nine Persuasion in hand. Does Yuna just reveal and take Spice's float? She does. She does just reveal and take the spice. You know what? I don't even hate that. I mean, at this point, you know, there's so many few points in the game, just taking it, I think it's fine. Uh, Beast is going to get his high council. So that gets, um, that gets this online here. He is just going to reveal. There's not much else he can do here. He's just going to take in the shadows, I guess. Uh, he might trash it somehow or something. I don't really know. He's just taking it so no one else does. That's basically it. He's not likely to see it. We'll see. 
So back to Elaza. Elaza kind of hates life a little bit. Um, I think Elaza's just got to go Imperial Basin and just take Spice here. Oh no, she's going High Council. Oh, she can't do that now. That's also been blocked by the Beast. So Imperial Basin, take the Spice. Whoa! Oh, of course she's got Water Peddlers. So she's got a war in hand here. So yeah, get the extra Spice. My apologies. That's fine. But yeah, we're going to get that spice of those tiebreakers. That could be very important here. Even if um, Zazabu wins this, there's still a big fight for second place. So Beast reveals for nine and gets a spice must flow. He's going to win the combat for two points. He needs to get spice back in line four. So he must awaken though. So he's going to have to find free spice somewhere. And that's going to be tough. I don't know where he's going to pick that up here. We'll have to see. Now, a laser probably has to tie break. Now, this is actually a weird spot for laser. Does a laser tie break to deny spice to red, to blue? Or do you just keep tie breaker for the 10 spice at the end? I think I'd actually keep it. He'll pass. There'll be a pass. I would probably keep tie breaker. I would hold that for the 10 end game spice. I think that's more invaluable. Possibly having to think about it. But I, I think I, I decline and say no. I think I would, I would rather hold on to it. I don't think denying the spice, the red, it doesn't really matter between Leonardo if he gets, if anything, you want Leonardo to get six spice, you would love Leonardo to win this next combat. Because it means that Beast isn't winning it, or Yuna isn't winning it. I think that's where we're at here now. I think everyone's got to accept this is a fight for second place, and Zazu's probably just winning the game. But he is, she is going to deny the spice. She is going to get in the way of that. I'm a little surprised. But... Okay, so you have to justify that extra spice now. What are you doing with those extra two spices that you weren't going to do anyways? We shall see. So seven points for James here. Suddenly he feels like he's got he's got a shot of winning this. Dreadnought is returned. Yeah, I think Zazby's a little bit surprised. But we'll move on. All right, here we go then. So, Elaza gets 16 Engineer in hand. That's a point. Elaza must find uh, a Spice Must Flow here. Absolutely must find it. She's going to get do this. This is just largely a block, really. Also to trash the... Um, it's also to trash in the shadows for the bump. But Lido needs to find a way to get hold of this extra bump here. He's going to use Calculator to get the Mentat, finally. So, someone's got to go in the way of... Uh, instead of shipping here, right? Oh, in the way of smuggling. Can't let Lido have that. See what the plan is. Lido's, like, desperately trying to find this 10th point. Desperately trying to find it. Just wants this game over and done with. Maybe he thinks he's going to win it on the field now. Oh, okay. So Beast has Shy Halud, which you have to trash a card to get, which is fine. I just trash Recon. You want as many daggers as you can here. Beast needs to, like, win this combat again. Carfag is the uh, is the fight here, so no no free troops anyways. It's kind of insane. Elaza has not yet put a card down. A helix engine will not be used here, so Elaza's up first. Now is Elaza really gonna get involved with highliners here? She says a long way behind. Maybe Elaza feels they've got to do this. I don't know, but you need a spice must flow. Spice must flow is worth two points too. Again, if Lena wins the combat, does it really matter to you? Research station is going to be first here, surely. you got to get in the way of um, of Yuna. It does. So here comes a ton of uh, ton of persuasion here. That's pretty good. One, three, five, seven, nine, ten persuasion. So Highliner is available if it gets there. Yuna's going to go selective breeding. And that'll be a point. Kit's uh, in the way of Lido as well in case he were to go there if he had access, which he doesn't. You're also desperately trying to find Spice Must Flows, but she's one short. My tech negotiation might be the follow-up here for Yuna. Back to the Beast. Beast has to get involved here immediately. I think Beast has just got to go to war here. Oh, his... Oh, his... Um, oh, Beast. Oh, Beast has just realized now. Beast might realize he's got to get in the way. And smuggling. He has to do it, right? He gets a point for Fold Space if he does it, or Emperor, or just gets a victory point for a faction and blocks Lido. Does he see it? Or does he just put troops in? You can just garrison these troops. You've got two more actions. You're going to put these troops in. 
You don't have to do it now. Between all the city access, like, you're probably getting at least one in. Oh, no! Oh, you can't let Lino have this! Is this... You can... There is still worlds. You can kind of win this game, but the thing is he's... I uh, don't know. This is really tricky. But you've got restricted ordinances online. I think you've got to shy Halud smuggling. You've got to block Lino. And you've got to just hope and pray that you're going to get these troops in. And you're going to win this combat. Obviously, a laser could not be going Highliner, though. If a laser goes Highliner, it's fine. You can just wait and go for the next combat. It's hard for Lino to win this game this round if he doesn't win the combat or he doesn't get the victory point at the Bene Gesserit. So if you want to win this combat, you've got to go for it. Also, Sleepless Awakens a thing, and you want spice. He wants to go Imperial Basin for the free spice. That's what it's about here. If he goes to shipping, he can't get the free spice. But I think you've got to block Lido here. There is a chance to not let him win this game. And he does! He finds it! All right, then. Beast is not playing for second place. Beast is playing for the win. He is going all in. Good on you, James. Point taken there. And that is bad news for Lido. Lido now struggling. Although Lido can just reveal. He might just reveal now, maybe. <laughs> of course, he can just reveal. Um, he's going to be able to reveal for um, the, the Guild Chief admin and get the bump anyway. So as long as no one else gets there first, it's going to be end game regardless. But from Beast's point of view, he did what he had to do. It's a shame that's going to cost him a victory point. Although he would have got it anyways. It doesn't really be a big deal. But Lino knows it's going to be in last round here. Here comes Flagship. Lino might win this combat anyways, to be fair. Lino might, I, think, I think Beast made the right play. I think it's a bit harder knowing we can see everything going on. But I think it was the right play. A laser's going to just buy... Shuttle fleet? Invasion ships? She's getting another Dreadnought? No, you can't do that in Highline. You don't have the money. You don't have the spice specifically. Leader having a look here. Yeah, you can't do that and, um, and go... I think they were looking to get Dreadnought and then Highline, but they don't have enough spice for it. They're one short. You could go invasion ships with tech negotiation. But that's one short. You'd have to go tech negotiation and ban the dreadnought. And it looks like that's the plan here. So they're going to garrison up and they're going to hope to win this combat. It's going to be tough though. They will need to take the cash back, which they do. Chow Murky is the next tech here. I wonder if that might interest uh, someone. Beast can actually grab that, by the way. It should be noted. So Highline is coming in, and Beast now knows it. Everyone knows it. Beast is coming in. Unifying strong arm, by the way. It's a shame she can't do anything with it. That is unfortuitous, but Highlander is incoming here, and Beast has to know it. So, what does Beast do here? So, let's do some maths here. So, a laser has... I mean, you, you're just going to go all in anyways? Looks like that's going to be the case. Going to go in here, paying it for the extra troop. Reckons he's got enough manpower. The problem is, is that this is the only chance he gets here. He finds diplomacy. Oh, that's a huge card! That's a monster find! That gives him access to Hardy Warriors! He can outpace a laser here with that. That's a massive, massive find. Or even worse than the worst, he can just go fold space and get a point. There's a huge find there for the beast. What a draw. Finds the diplomacy. Big card. A laser's going to come in here with Highliner. So she's going to be in seven more troops. That'll be 19 strength. Uh, all her swords gives us 22... But Beast will be... Oh, it's going to be tight. Beast can... I think Beast... best he can do is to tie. 13, 20... No, 23. He would be enough just... Wow. And all of a sudden, this, this is going to be close. 
Beast might as well just, I mean, Leader might as well just reveal. He's got nothing else to do here, right? He's not going to want to spend the spice, so he'll just take this in. Take the Bene Gesserit Alliance and hold on and hope he's good here. But it's going to be very close. Beast Raban will be able to hit Hardy Warriors. No one's going to be able to stop that. And I, I, I don't know who's going to win this game. It's very tight. I fear that Beast might be, you know, might be regretting he didn't make more faction access when he still could. But it is what it is. Water of Life found for Lido is valueless. Cannot do anything with it. Can't draw cards to try and find Spice's Flow here. There's no good. He was hoping for uh, anything else. So that's a shame. Nothing to do there. It would just take the Spice. I honestly think that Spice is going to get him over the line here. Problem is, if Beast wins this, uh, Beast will win on tiebreak. Uh, uh, Leader's going to win on Spice tiebreak here. Here comes the Highliner. A laser is going to... Oh, but a laser can't use the Ben and Jesuit swords. Oh, she wants to buy Spice Must Flow, so she will have to give those up. Yuna just drawing cards and hoping... Oh my god, Yuna finds a victory point out of the Mentor! Oh my gosh, Gurney Alex, good enough for that. That's a victory point. What a find. <laughs> oh, wow, that's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome, that. Yuna's just like, eh, it's a free punt. Finds a victory point. That might be the difference between third and fourth place here. That might well be a point on the on the table. Insane. So Beast has to go Hardy Warriors, right? It's the only move. And you just gotta hope you're good. Eliza has no sort, no intrigues, and hadn't gone very hard for combat here. It's the only play. It will be good for the combat, and he does do it. So in they go. Eliza will be unhappy to see diplomacy. I don't think that's necessary. I think it's all. Uh... Oh, it is. It's not counting that yet. It does next time round. Yeah, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. It's a little, it's a little messy here. But I was just trying to work out if that number is actually correct or not. It's a bit weird when with the, the high counts if it counts it improperly. 14, 17, 21 is correct. Not adding the extra 5. Yeah, it adds in the high council immediately. It recognizes it straight away. Very cool. I cannot believe it's shooting the in the end actually has gotten value here. I really didn't think Beast was going to find any value out of it, but it has. So, Eliza now realizes she can't win the combat. So, Spice Must Flow gets the point for X and Engineer. That's five. She's going to get three more for Spice Satellites, but that's going to be it. I think fourth might be... I don't know, but Yuna's going to get a Spice Must Flow, but Yuna's going to not win any, any battle spoils here. Red just takes the one. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, seventeen. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. So can take both swords and that. That is all good. Yep. Nine even taking the Jesuit swords, but it's not gonna be enough. So Beast Raban is gonna find its way to win this battle point here. It's gonna be good for second. And I think James will take it. It's a pretty chaotic game here. No one has anything to play. That's going to be all she wrote here, so... Um, so Lido is going to win on Spice Tiebreak. As it turns out here, with 10 and 5. Beast went, gets 10 and 3. Um, and then... Everyone needs to take all their rewards. This is all relevant. So there's going to be an intrigue for red. So red can still find an intrigue here. And green and uh, and then blue needs to take the space that they've done. Bribery's found. It's no good. So that is confirmed then. So Zazamu wins it by a scruff of the neck as it turns out. Just kind of insane the the, uh, the the comeback here from the other players. James gets second, and Unfussable with nine for third, and then Oko unfortunately fought for this one. It's kind of a bit harsh, really. It's a pretty crazy game, so we'll go say hi to them.
Well, that wasn't a chaotic game at all. No, not at all. I only had to revert like four actions. <laughs> yeah, there was a there was a lot of there was a lot going on in this game. Some deep deep tanks. There was uh, some, some some all sorts of madness last round. Um, some some gutsy choices. James, so I don't I don't know how you got value. Out. I really didn't think you bought restricted to get any value out of that, but you did in the end. Probably don't okay. well to get second place. Guys, last last round last round. If I just drew anything, anything apart from this bad yeah. card. It was spice must flow. Yeah, yeah, you were good, but that made it made it pretty awkward. Though you're always gonna get a planet spice, but it was always uncomfortable. It was a bad find, but you, you yeah. managed to get in the end. To be fair though, to the other players, considering that you're at like four points clear at one point, like the level of combat from the other three is very, very impressive. Yeah, you I mean, very I'm... much cock blocked me so hard in the previous round. To be uh... fair. Everyone was blocking everyone this game. I really that, noticed that. Is that. True. Yet Green took Mentat about six, seven times, sort of thing. Um, yeah. There was interrupting of smuggling. There was faction. There was a lot of people uh, blocking the characters in this one. Which is cool. Yeah, unfathomable. Yeah, so hard with this. yeah. <laughs> a laser. Yeah, it was the only play had to get that, and it was a good. It was a good find, and it's netted you some points end of the day. So and I, went, and I basically went over here to cut. To cock James. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. Everyone was blocking. It's really cool. Like you don't see it enough, really. A lot of games people just do their own thing. So to see a game with everyone trying to get in each other's way was, was very fascinating. And I think this would be hopefully a lot of people on the YouTube will will, will agree with this one. Um yeah, you just don't get to see it very often, especially not for such a sustained period across the game. So But that was a good it was a good watch. It was all yeah, over yeah, the place. Yeah. You take the five points, but as it turned out, only only just. Yeah, that was really close. That was really, really also, close. Also, also, like when Un when Unfuzzable took this, I was like, I mean, he he might have three on board on paper. Yeah. Oh yeah, but tons of tons of end games and Arco uh, as well. I I, I I feel really bad if you Arco. Like I don't think you deserve fourth place in this at all. Like it was a really unfortunate. You do have my my sympathies there. Oh, I think, thank you. But I I think you deserve more than that. But it's the it's the way it goes sometimes. Someone's got to come forth, and it, it by the end it was like it was kind of anyone's really. I feel like I should stop taking you now because I feel like every time that that I take her, it's fourth place. So I mean, yeah, it's she's not easy to use. Although to be fair, like the Mentat just bang off Gurney Hallock and take the point. You know that that felt a little that probably That's felt a little true, better. But but, <laughs> but yeah, it was an all over the place game. So that's going to do it for us here, the action of Group L. Yeah, what a chaotic match that was. It was all over the place. But as I said, I think it's really cool to see a game where everyone's trying to get in each other's way and block each other's moves. You know, I, I appreciate that. Something I always say that people should do more. You usually get in these spots where someone wants to have someone be blocked but don't want to be the one to do it. Well, in this game, everyone was blocking everyone else. So it didn't really matter at all. Um, so I think a really fascinating watch this one. Again, I think... It could have been almost anyone's at the end. Oko's probably unlucky to be fought from this one, but it, it's the way it barreled out in the end. Zazwell holds on, but only, only just this time. And, um, you know, goes to show, I think, probably the overall strength of the group. Thank you for watching, everyone. Take care of yourselves. We will see you all in the next conflict.